welcome back to another video. I hope you are all doing okay. Today I'm going to be coming to you with a little bit of a video that I have done previously, but it was a hot minute ago. It was probably about 18 months ago and it was a video on basically what I wish I knew before becoming a nail tech. I basically have a lot of updated kind of tips and things that I wanted to put together in a video to do a little bit of an update video. I'm going to leave the other one up. They are all different pieces of advice and it's a bit different to my last video because like I say it was quite a while ago so I was very new still and yeah it was just, it was still all very valid points but the video is not great but anyways we won't talk about that. I must say I'm loving having this camera now because I have all of my notes on my phone and now I can have my phone without even struggling to look at the notes still. So I've written everything down that I kind of wanted to cover in this video and hopefully you will find it helpful whether you are a beginner or whether you're not. Obviously some people learn to do nails years and years and years ago and sometimes are just picking it back up again and just kind of wanting to kind of come back into the nail world and are just looking for some videos to basically get some reassurance on everything but yeah I just wanted to basically make this video which is a little bit of an updated what I wish I knew before coming a nail tech so I hope you find it helpful and we will get into it. So the first one that I wanted to cover is I don't think I realised when I was becoming a nail tech and I thought yeah I'm going to go and do my course, I'm going to do nails and obviously if you guys have watched my channel for a while you will know I did it part time at the start and then went over into the self-employed world after about a year. One thing that I didn't realise is how much this job is 24-7. Now, obviously, you control how much effort you put into maybe basically your social media and your clients and how many clients you take on and all of that sort of stuff. But yeah, I fully didn't realise how much time I would actually put into this. Now, I know it's my choice and I can, I'm the only one in control of it, basically. But this job never stops. Like, this is a 24-7 kind of situation and even when I'm laying in bed at night or first thing in the morning I wake up I have messages I have to respond to like I'm busy doing like YouTube I'm doing Instagram creating content for all that kind of stuff and it's a lot it really is but when you love something it kind of doesn't feel like a job and I know this like sounds proper cliche but to me this is something that I really really enjoy and I think that's the kind of difference if you don't love it and you're kind of doing it because you know you just it's a job then it's a little bit different but yeah this job is like 24 7 if you really want to like put your all into it and that's what I'm doing but like I say I absolutely love it but sometimes it can get a little bit draining when you're literally laying in bed at night and it's like 11 o'clock at night and you're having messages about appointments and stuff like that because in my head I'm like oh I just want to get it sorted so I'll be replying to messages because I'll think oh well if I wake up in the morning and I'm like up getting my you know morning routine done and then I'm starting again with clients I'm like I need to find time to respond and I don't want to be rude when I get back to messages so I'd just rather get it done there and then but obviously that is my fault and I kind of like I say it's my it's my fault for obviously I'm the one in control of it but that is one thing that I didn't realize when I first started because honestly it's not just clients that are the bottom line like it's the, the clients are the top like surface like you you don't even realize how much goes into the social media the like content creating the all of that stuff is how you get your clients obviously other than word of mouth and it is a lot like to keep up it's, it takes its toll on you you kind of need to chill out a little bit sometimes i know i do that's just one thing that i didn't realize that it just that a lot of effort goes into all of the social media side of it social media is a job in itself it is it's hard work and to try and find the balance between clients and social media is it's a lot i'd probably say in my life it probably equals the amount of time that I do put into clients that I have all day every day. I probably put the same amount of time into my social media, my YouTube, my Instagram, everything like that. I probably put the same amount of time in. So when I'm doing clients all day, I'll go in, you know, or finish finish my clients for the day. I'll go home and I'll be doing Instagram, I'll be doing um, YouTube, I'll be replying to clients, organising my diary 
doing the admin side of like doing your taxes and all that sort of stuff which actually reminds me if you guys do want any help with that if you guys want to see kind of how i log everything obviously i have an accountant to do my actual returns and stuff but I obviously have to maintain everything throughout the year myself. So if you guys need any help with that or want me to do a video on it, then just drop it in the comments below. Just let me know and I can put something together and show you how I log everything and how I basically keep on top of things. Try and keep on top of things. So yeah, I can do that. Just let me know if anyone wants that, then I can sort it. So when I first started doing nails, I didn't realize how fast trends move. Whilst you're learning one thing, another trend will be coming in that I need to try and keep on top of and create content. And it just carries on. Like it's literally, it never stops. Like you've always kind of got to try and keep the trends especially if you're into content creating and obviously trying to like create content for your instagram and things like that create design ideas for your clients or inspo for the nail techs then the trends do not stop they come in thick and fast sometimes you're not going to be able to do all of them i've realized this and it's really frustrating when you want to be able to do a design that you just can't get the hang of i do nail a lot but only on a basic scale really i am not very good i'm not a natural like artistic person i'm not very good at art if you gave me a pen and a piece of paper so i'm not going to be able to do that on nails like there's a lot of things that i've come across that i've loved to have been be able to do and i just can't and it's so stressful you just want to be able to do it but it's not going to be like that you're not going to be able to do everything and just bear that in mind that you are going to have your niche you're going to have the things that you're good at you're not going to be able to do everything and it's just impossible to try and keep up with everything but try your best i do doesn't always work but we just we carry on <laughs> that was another thing that i wish i knew before coming to nail tech is that you will never ever stop learning i thought i would go and do my course i would learn everything i need to know and i would just take that with me for the future it actually never stops you always have to be learning to keep up with the times if you will you'll always be learning new stuff there's always going to be new things that are coming in for example when I did my uh, my course, my qualification, acrylics were the in thing that's all re people really got. And then Biab comes along and Biab's really popular and then it's a new thing that you have to learn. And that's gonna be like the case for a long, long time. There's always gonna be new things that you have to keep up with and you're gonna be learning. Like I say, I thought it was just gonna be, yeah, here's the basics, that's all you're gonna need. It's literally couldn't be further from the truth you'll always be learning new things and you'll just pick it up from like even even like tiktoks and like reels and stuff these days like the little mini tutorials of learning how to learn different things i absolutely love them and yeah just even if you just scroll in then you'll learn new things you'll see different techniques of how to do stuff and little tips and tricks like little videos like these then you'll you'll always be learning but it'll be really helpful for your growth and your development and, and your portfolio it's it's all benefits and it all helps in basically what you're going to be giving your clients the services that you provide and it's all good in the long run now when it comes to social media i am well i was i'm not really anymore really really bad for comparing yourself to other people now i would see nail pictures on instagram on a daily basis and i would look and be like oh my god why do my nail pictures not look like that why do my sets not look like that why are my nail art skills not as good as those and this is mainly for the beginners now when you first start out you will see so many profiles on instagram and tiktok all across social media and everyone will be displaying their best work and you it's natural to look at that and be like why is mine not like that why why am i kind of lacking in this area or that area and it's so easy to compare yourself and i used to be so bad for it i would even come on here on youtube years ago and say the same thing but i would still be comparing myself to the people now i've got a lot better at it now i very very rarely do it now because like i said before and i have said many a times your niche is so important because it's what you're good at and it's what you're concentrating on not everyone's niche is the same and that's what that's what makes it interesting if we were all the same then it'd be boring so yeah just don't compare yourself to the people you're on your own path for a reason and as long as you're as a beginner as long as your sets are getting 
better and better as they go along then that's all that matters another thing that i kind of didn't well not that i didn't realize but that i just kind of forgot about when i first started my qualification and when i qualified was the amount of research that has to go into your products your setup everything like that because i just thought that i would be able to just kind of take suggestions from my training academy and just run with it and that's not really how it's worked i have literally just taken it on my own accord to go do some research into the products that i'm using now the whole situation with allergies and stuff at the moment has basically just highlighted it for everyone is that you need to be looking into the different brands that you're using and making sure that what you're using is going to be best for you and your clients not just what you're given at your training academy or you know wherever you basically qualify because there still is a lot of nail academies and educators that are unfortunately still kind of promoting unsafe brands and you just need to kind of take it upon yourself to look into these brands that they're providing and making sure that you are happy with the ingredients now i know i've mentioned in quite a few videos the nail tech awareness group on facebook but i see plenty of posts on there that are people that have just done their qualification and they'll say that they've been provided with the kit and this is what's in the kit and there is actually really really bad reactions happening from said brand like whichever one it is and it just goes to show that you really really do need to look into the products that you're using and like i say do your own research because you can't rely on everyone else basically i mean it's good to have like as a basics when you first start because when you first come into the nail world it's really really very intimidating and you don't really know where to start but it's good to have the measure basics and have something to start off with but yeah as you kind of progress into the months and months that go on after your qualification and you're finding your feet with it all just have a little bit of a you know a, a day or so just to put in a lot of research to decide what's best for you and your clients because i can't stress that enough don't always go with just what you're given another point that i just wanted to make is something that i didn't realize and have only really I, i'm lucky enough to not have to deal with it too much that not every client that comes your way is a good one and this is something that you'll learn as and when you kind of start dealing with more clients and you will see the good from the bad ones and i'm not saying that it happens often because it really really doesn't but when you're starting to get really busy and you have clients that mess you around they turn up late to appointments they don't pay deposits they pay you late things like that not every client that walks through the door is a good one and don't feel bad for having to turn them away or if you know if you want to fill that client space with somebody that you know is going to be better and and you're going to be able to trust more you do get it sometimes where you you have people that try and mess you around a little bit and you kind of have to stand your ground and this is something that i really struggled with because i am a bit of a pushover and with my clients i am i just like to help and i like to be helpful and sometimes it can be taken for granted a little bit so you do have to kind of stand your ground and i am getting better with it as it goes along it's only taken me like what nearly three years but yeah just stand your ground with it and deal with those kind of clients in the best way possible at the end of the day you're trying to run a business and people that are just here to mess that up are not always a good client so like i say just don't feel bad if you know you need to deal with clients that you know are messing you around because not everyone's like the ideal client and i just want you to make sure that you are standing your ground and you are putting yourself first because it's easier said than done but it's just something that i want you to bear in mind other than those points that i've pointed out i don't want this to be a negative video at all i just just wanted to point out a few little tips that i wish i knew before coming to nail tech and I can't make this a negative video because I absolutely love my job and I wouldn't change it for the world. I hope you found it helpful and obviously if you are a beginner or if you're kind of coming back into the nail world and that's why you're watching this video, you will absolutely love it and I'm hoping that you find your feet with it all because it was, it was tough and it was a bit of a surprise when I first came into the whole nail world and it's a lot to take on and it can get quite stressful and that's why i'm here i hope you find 
my video is helpful it's literally what what it's for to help you guys that are just starting out or anyone that is at any point in their nail journey basically if you're a beginner then don't let any of these points put you off it is an absolutely amazing job and i i wouldn't change it for the world like i say if you need any help with anything you know you can always ask me i'm only a message away you can either put them in the comments below or you can message me on Instagram. Or if there's any videos that you want me to make and I haven't covered, then just let me know because I can put them together. I have a little list going in my phone of all the videos that I need to make for you guys. So if you have any suggestions of anything that you want me to cover, then literally just drop me a message. Or you know, if you don't wanna put it in the comments for everyone to see, just message me on Instagram. I'll pop my little handle down in the bottom so you can head over there and have a look. But thank you so, so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, if you could please like and subscribe, that would be really, really helpful. Thank you so, so much. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.